Let's look at the browser here on the right. In my CSS for Beginners course, I went over how to create a mobile nav bar and animated mobile menu. However, using HTML and CSS only, no JavaScript, it's a little more difficult to be able to click the X and reverse those animations. Let's look at how this works. Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we'll be reversing our mobile menu animations with HTML and CSS only. I'll be using the Chrome web browser, the Visual Studio Code editor, and the live server extension for Visual Studio Code to view the web page. There are links to these tools, starter code files, and all resources in the description below. Let's get started by looking at our starter code for the project. Now this starter code came from lesson 22 in my 24 lesson course on CSS for Beginners where we went over some animations and actually animated this mobile menu to uh, display everything. But again, reversing it is more difficult and I didn't want to include that in a beginner's course. So we've got it here kind of as a bonus chapter for those that have watched the course or if you're about to watch that and then come back to this, that's great too. Okay, so we've got some basic HTML here and we've got this index.html page, and then we've got a products.html page that's almost identical. It's just to have another page to navigate to to test out the links if we want to. Other than that, we have a style.css file that's inside of a CSS folder, which is linked to both pages, and it's got those starter styles that I talked about. Okay, let's get started, and I'm using the VS Code Live Server extension, so I'm going to click Go Live down here in the bottom right, and it should get our project started, and I'll drag our code to the left, and I'll also hide the file tree by pressing Control B, just so we can see what's going on here. Okay, here is our starter code and we've got Acme Co. And when I hover over, not just click, but when I hover, the mobile menu displays. And then it reverses when I take that away. But if I click the X, it doesn't work. So what we're talking about doing today is making it work so when we click the X, that works. What we're going to lose is the simple hover that no matter what happens when we hover anywhere on the menu right now or on the nav bar, it goes ahead and displays that. So it will be all based on clicking for this alternative solution that we're looking at today. Okay, with the code on the left, I'm going to press Alt-Z just so any long line of code like we have here at the top now wraps down to a second line instead of going off of the VS Code screen. And now let's go ahead and scroll down to where we see the header element. And the first thing I'm going to do here is remove this background color, or I could actually say Control-X and cut the background color out because I'm going to put it inside of this header title line. So I'll go ahead and control V to paste that in. But there's some things we could add here inside of the header as well. And they aren't things that are going to change the appearance, but if we have this mobile nav bar, we might want to set it to position sticky so it stays at the top instead of scrolling up with any other content. And then we need to give a top zero so it tells the position to be positioned at the very top. And then we say Z index of one, and that keeps it above the other content as well. So again, you don't see a change, but if we had content here to scroll, you would see the difference. Something else I might wanna do, just because I like a, a darker screen most of the time, is I'm going to put a background color here and set this to midnight blue. We save, we should see a difference there, and we certainly do. And I want to set the header background color, much like you saw in the intro example, to black. And now that looks much better to me. But one thing we could do, just to uh, give it a little style, say background dash image, and we'll just use this background color now as a fallback, because here we can add a linear gradient, and we'll say to the right, and then the first color will be our midnight blue, and our second color will be Rebecca purple. 
and let's put a semicolon after that. And when we save, we definitely see the change load right away. Now it starts at midnight blue, goes to purple, just looks better to me when we look at this example. So just changing those colors for to save my eyes from the bright colors, but also just for a little bit better appearance. And now let's jump over to the HTML. I'm at the index.html. I'll press Alt Z again so all the code appears in VS Code instead of going off of the screen. It just wraps down a line if it needs to. And we're going to add a couple of things here. One, we've got a button and I noticed I didn't add a title or an ARIA label or anything like that. And when we're using buttons with icons, it's a good idea to do that. So I'm just going to say open nav menu for the title. And that's pretty much all I'm going to change there. But now a much bigger change is between this section that has our header, the header title line class essentially, and our nav element, I'm going to add a button right here in the middle. I'm going to set this class equal to close menu button. And I'll just abbreviate button with BTN. I'll set a title on this as well. And I'll say close nav menu. And then I'm going to set a tab index on this to a negative one. And that means I do not want it to have focus if someone tabs through our mobile menu. So they will not be able to focus on this. We're actually going to hide this button and only show it at specific times. And now with those changes in place, since our products.html page is essentially the same, I'm just going to start here at this first button inside the section and come all the way down through the second button and control C to copy. Then I'm going to go to the products.html and I'm going to select everything here that was the same in the other page and paste. And now we have the new button here as well. Alt Z again to get it all to wrap on one page. And I just noticed I need to set this. Well, we can just set it to a slash actually, which would take it back to the root, which is our index.html. So that has corrected the link as well. And let's see, I've got products here in the header. So when we click on products, we should see that. Now we can tell we already have a problem here, but we will be fixing these things in the future. So we're good to go. Let's go back to the home page. And it's actually the new button that we have created that's between these two, but we haven't styled it yet. So let's go back to the CSS and add some styles for this button. Let's add them right underneath the menu button that is already inside of our CSS. And that was the original hamburger button that was created. So here we'll have close menu BTN for button. And we're going to start out with a display of none. And if we save that much, yes, that dot has now disappeared that was over here. Other than that, we'll start out with a background color and let's make it transparent. And now let's set an outline to none, we'll eventually set a border to none. But right now, I'm going to set the border to one pixel solid red, so we can see where this transparent button is when we need to see it. We'll set position to absolute, and we'll set the top to 0.25 rem, and we'll set the right to 0.5 rem. Notice this matches the padding that we have on the header title line. So we're just matching that padding to make sure our transparent button can go directly over the existing menu button when we need it to. And the menu button is 48 by 48. So I will just copy those and I'll set that inside of this button as well. And now notice if I change this to block, we should be able to see the red outline of the button as it's right around our hamburger button as well. So they're just on top of each other currently. So let's set this back to display none for now. And now I'm going to scroll down and we'll find where I am using a pseudo selector is. And so notice we're setting the hover and the focus within and that's when we see the animation, even when we hover. We're going to lose that hover we're going to keep the focus within, but it's not going to be directly on the header. So I'm going to select everything from the left all the way to the end of header, then press Control D. And yes, for these first three only is where I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to put dot header dash title dash line, which is the class we had. And now we need to get rid of this closing parentheses as well. So I'm going to select the in and the closing parentheses 
Control D to select each one of those, then go to the right and then backspace once. And now I've selected all of those. This sets that hamburger animation. So now it's when you have focus within that specific class is when that hamburger icon will be animated. So it will no longer do it on hover. Notice we're still showing the menu right now, but we're not going to be doing that until we click that hamburger class there. Okay, I'm going to scroll just a little more. I'm going to take this last is header hover, header focus within nav here, control X to select it. And I'm going to put it under the nav element styles itself because we're going to change some things about this too. So once again, I need to select everything from the left and come all the way over to the focus header focus within because we'll actually keep that. So then I'll just hit backspace and then I'm going to get rid of this closing parentheses. So it's header focus within nav and we have display block, but we need to take the transform origin and animation control X to get those and actually move them inside of this header focus within nav and leave them right there. I'm also going to set a position relative on the nav. And I'm going to take the background color that was set on the nav itself and I'm going to take it just a little further down to the nav unordered list and put the background color inside of that. Now currently we're not seeing many changes, but we're just about to do more for this. Right now it's not changing unless we kind of click away and it doesn't do what we want when we click on the X. I'm clicking on it right now. So now let's fix that. So I'm going to set something right here and say header and then have focus within also. But after that we'll start with our new class, the close menu button. And inside of here, we'll say display block. So now when we have focus, it should show that button. And we now see the red X there. But after we click the button and our new close button has focus, we can't leave it on top of the hamburger menu because then we won't be able to click the hamburger menu to once again open the menu if we want to. So now we're selecting if the header has focus within and our focus is on the close button. And what we're going to do now is transform and we'll set to translate X. So we'll just move it over 50 pixels. So once again, if we show it, now it has moved over. We don't have the animation we wanted yet, but what will happen is moving the red box over to the left when we click it. We don't have the closing animation, I should say, that we want yet, but it shows up. And now if I actually click the transparent button, it moves to the left. So now let's add a closing animation. And we have our keyframes here called Show Menu. So I'm just going to copy this down, highlight everything, Shift, Alt, and the down arrow. And now instead of Show Menu, I'm going to call this Hide Menu. And we'll start out at zero, and then we'll be doing just the opposite. So we'll want it to display here at zero, and we will want to be back to a zero when we get to 100%. But instead of 80% here, which was 20% before the ending, we'll want 20% before the close. So it's just the opposite, essentially, of what we have here for our show menu. So there's the hide menu animation but we still need to apply that animation. And we're going to do this with an adjacent sibling selector. Now remember we put our new button adjacent to the nav. It came before the nav element inside of our HTML. So here we can say close menu button and the adjacent sibling selector. Oh, this also needs to have focus. And then we'll say plus nav. So that is the adjacent sibling that we are selecting. We'll say transform origin, top center, and then we'll say animation, and we'll choose our hide menu animation. We'll say go for half a second. We'll choose ease and forward, so it keeps the closing state. And now after we save that, we have displayed our menu, and the transparent button is over the X. So now when I click the X, it moves to the left 
and the animation reverses. Just a few closing changes to make now that you probably won't notice a much of a visible difference, but just to wrap up what we were already doing. So we had the background color here at the nav UL. I want to go ahead and add a position. I could spell position correctly. This is absolute, which is why we set the relative on the parent of this already. Set the width to 100%, top zero and Z dash z dash index one once again and we'll just check our menu after those changes everything looks pretty good here go back that's good let's also go to the products page you can see the products header it's importing in that same css and everything's working there as well go back to home and then scrolling down to the bottom of the pre-existing css if you wanted to add some content you could put it all inside of the main element, the way this structure is. Set it to a flex grow of one, since we have flex set on the body for display. And that way, the main element will fill out the page if you don't have enough content to. But likewise, if you need it to take up more than one page, you could also set the min height to 200 VH or something like that. So you definitely have something to scroll to test out. I'll just say flex grow one, I'll set a display to grid, and then I'll say place content center, and then just so we can test out the scroll, let's say min height is 200 VH here. Now let me go back to the HTML, scroll down, and just put a paragraph inside of that that says, hey. So when we save, now we have a scroll bar over here, our nav bar stays at the top, and we scroll, and there's our hey right here in the middle. So everything works as expected. It scrolls and our menu and nav bar stays exactly where it should. And now quickly back in the style CSS file, one thing you can put at the bottom is a media query and this one is 768. So when it gets to iPad width, for example, you could of course not have the mobile menu and you could go back to a normal menu if you didn't have more than four menu items. But the key thing I want to highlight here, I just pasted this in that you can get from the starter code. It changes it from a mobile menu. The key thing I want to highlight here is you want to remove that animation if you do this. And that's because you don't want uh, some strange animation on your non-mobile menu as well. So with those changes in there now, if we take this out to a full page, you see we have a full menu and you no longer have that mobile menu. So I wanted to include that in that code for you as well in the finished one here. So all in all, we've made those changes. I understand if you were having a hard time following along because you hadn't completed the earlier tutorial that made those first animations. And so that's why I really wanted to point you in the direction of that CSS for Beginners course. Again, it's chapter, or you could say lesson 22 in that course, where the animation is originally constructed and you basically get all of this starter code and then you can make the changes that we did today to reverse that. And of course, you probably also wanna remove that one pixel red border around here and change it to a border none. And so let's go ahead and do that. I'll just comment the one out. And when you do that, you'll notice everything looks like it's basically working with JavaScript, but it's not, it's HTML and CSS only. So one last time, there's no red border now, and we can click the X and it closes. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.